Welcome to this video where we're going to be trying to measure the temperature change in the reaction between copper sulfate solution and zinc powder. Uh, as you can see from the zinc powder label, uh, this is actually, this grey powder in here is actually highly flammable and so we need to be uh, acting safely. Uh, it's also an environmental hazard so we need to make sure that we dispose of our waste correctly. Uh, and the copper sulfate solution, it's not labelled on here but is actually corrosive at this concentration so again some safety uh, is needed there. Um, now furthermore, um, we want to be able to do this fairly quickly uh, so that we can investigate perhaps the effect of the concentration of copper sulphate uh, or the mass of zinc powder or some other factor on the temperature change. So let's see how we'll do it. In order to make this experiment a little bit quicker and the waste disposal better, we're going to actually carry out our experiments in glass vials which look like this. Um, now the glass by itself is a fairly um, good conductor of heat so that's not going to give us very accurate results if we just use the vial. And so what we're going to do is provide some insulation around it, or lagging, as it's called. And in order to do that, we've got these plastic beakers. And we're just going to fill those up with a bit of cotton wool. Um, and you're just going to, as you do this, create, with a few pieces of cotton wool, a sort of vial-sized shape, or hole, in the middle. Um, so you can experiment, just put an empty vial in there, just tuck it in nicely, don't need to pack it in too tightly, and that is what your reaction vessel should look like. And these take around about 10 millilitres of solution, so that's how much we're going to measure out. Um, so we're actually going to do that using these dropping pipettes. So here's a 3 millilitre dropping pipette. You can see the markings here, 1, 2, 3 millilitres. So I'm going to try to take about 2 millilitres five times uh, in order to make um, the 10 millilitres that I need. So just take the bung off, leave it upright so we don't stain the table. Then I'm just going to get down to a reasonably low level and just pick up the 2 millilitres that I need. I haven't quite got enough there, so I'm just going to try again. There we go. Now, you can see there, I'm just going to drop it down until it gets the 2 millilitre mark. And then I can transfer that across. Then I repeat, and that is the 10 millilitres measured out. Now we then need to measure the temperature at the beginning. So we're just going to place our vial into the lagged beaker uh, that we had. Let's try and get it to sit fairly horizontally in there. And then we're going to put a thermometer in, and we just need to leave the thermometer a little while so that it gets used to the temperature of the liquid that it's put into. Now if I just let it go like that, you can see that the vial is actually leaning back quite dangerously. If I let this go, it's going to go all over the bench. So we need one of the people in the pair to actually hold the vial upwards like that as they read the temperature. Okay, so I've waited a little while so it can get to the temperature of the actual liquid. I'm getting down to eye level again and I'm reading the reading. It's just above 22 degrees uh, C. Okay, so whilst um, one of the pairs is reading the initial temperature reading, the other partner is going to be weighing out the zinc. So in order to do that, we've got these top hand balances, left hand button here, just hold it down if it's one of this style, um, and it will turn on. Just check it's on, on at the plug if it hasn't um, come up. And you see it's reading zero. We're going to weigh into a weighing boat. First, we just check that everything's clean. Top pan is clean, uh, weigh boat's clean. I'm going to pop that on there. You can see that's got a certain amount of mass, so if we just press this zero button or the tear button equally would work, and we just get that down to zero. Now we need about 0.35 to 0.45 grams of this zinc. It doesn't have to be very accurate, but we do need to get it in that region. It's going to be in excess. So I just dip my spatula in. I'm trying to get the distance here to be very, very small, and I'm just reading on the reading that was 0.13 grams. There, I've gone to 0.47, so already that's too much. It's slightly outside the range, but to be honest, it doesn't actually matter. I wouldn't bother trying to scoop things back in because that tends to be when the spillages happen. So we're at 0.48 grams, which is certainly enough. I'm just going to put the cap on my zinc powder. I'll make sure my spatula goes somewhere safe. It's always good in this experiment to have plenty of blue roll around so you can make sure that you can put your equipment on there to prevent anything from um, going onto the benches. Okay, so we've now got the weighed zinc, we've got the measured out copper sulphate solution, thermometer is on hand, 
Uh, it's useful if they've got these um, guards here to prevent it from uh, actually rolling off the table, but do make sure you've not got this too close to the edge. And now we're ready to go. Good idea with the whey, but just give it, just pinch the sides in, give it a bit of a shake just to loosen the powder because sometimes it can stick. What we're aiming to do is get it in there with the minimum amount of lost zinc. We have got an excess, but we want to try and get it in there pretty quickly as well. So here goes. You might find gripping the beaker, that would help. It doesn't matter if we've got a bit left over in the way boat, we're then going to get the thermometer and begin to stir the lagged vial. Right, I think it has finally stopped going up. It really pays to keep stirring this. Um, even now it would be good to keep stirring and see if it just goes up any further, but I think that has reached the maximum, which is at about 38 and a half degrees C um, for this first um, experiment. Okay, so once you've got your final temperature reading, uh, you should be able to just carefully push the lagging down, bring out the vial. You'll have a, a washing up bowl, uh, sorry, a waste bucket in on your bench that looks a bit like this. Um, you're just gonna pour your whole mixture through there. Um, so once you've put your uh, reaction mixture into your waste bucket, uh, you're going to then put your vial uh, into the washing up bowl that's on your table um, and then you'll be ready to start the next experiment. Before you do so, make sure you've recorded your initial and final temperatures. Right, that was the first experiment completed. Now the second ones, you're going to have to do it varying the concentration of copper sulphate. That's the variable uh, that I've chosen to vary here just to show you. So we need to prepare some solutions with different concentrations of copper sulphate in. And so in order to do that, you're going to take your stock solution of copper sulphate, which is at 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed concentration. And instead of using 10 centimeters cubed of it, you're just going to use a slightly lower volume, and then you're going to top up to a total of 10 still using distilled water. Again, using the dropping pipettes uh, to do the measurements. Um, so you would, for example, the first one, it needs to be uh, two centimetres cubed of distilled water. So if I just do the same thing there and bring up two centimetres cubed of distilled water. And then this is a fresh vial, by the way. I'm going to do the same thing with the copper sulphate, just bringing up about two mils at a time, dropping it down to the level and then bringing that really close so I don't get any spillage and then drop it into there. And I would continue on until I'd added the right volume to get up to 10 millilitres in total or 10 centimetres cubed. And then I would repeat the same experiment, putting the vial into the lagged beaker, taking the temperature, weighing out the mass of zinc and so on and so forth, until I've got somewhere between four and five uh, different concentrations that I need to experiment with.